M0FXB, welcome to my channel. So we have the new Raspberry Pi 5. These are quite hard to get at the moment, but we managed to get one. This is the 4GB model, although you can get a 8GB model. The description says more than twice as fast and infinitely smoother. Raspberry Pi 5 features the Broadcom BCM2712 quad core ARM Cortex A76 processor at 2.4 gigahertz, making it up to three times faster than the previous generation. Okay, and so on and so on. So there's a lot here. Now these are very recognizable items. They, they all look the same, don't they? We always say that they all look the same. I always think that. So let's take it out of the box. Now the reason we've got my, to show you what's in the box while we're here. Got this, okay, showing it peeling things off and this safety guide the actual pie itself we're seeing a USB-C and two micro are they hate yeah HDMI output so you can have twin monitors is my guess there's the famous chip Just zoom in on that Hopefully you can see that, Broadcom 2.7, USB wise, two standards, two super fast ones and a Ethernet built in Bluetooth, built in Wi-Fi. So I haven't even turned this on and there's your SD card slot there. So yeah, I'm really pleased to have it. So what I'm going to do, I mean, I really I only use them for my hotspots and my all star nodes. I have fired up raspberry in a couple of times but it's not really my thing i've always got th you know three or four raspberry pi 3b's lying around because they always come in handy and of course there's many programs for ham radio that you can run on these what i'm going to do today is just just test the sort of boot up with my hotspot really so this hotspot here if we unplug it just a dmr hotspot oh yeah i've got a, a usb c adapter always comes in handy so I don't have to keep grabbing different cables. We'll plug it in and then we're going to count our pause, but we're going to count until it comes on. So we're up to about 15 seconds so far. If you've never used a, a hotspot, they basically connect ham radios like this one, which we can turn on, to the internet. And to, we call it talk groups, reflectors, ETC and this is the Kenwood D74 and it is it, you know it's the, the radio signal comes from this antenna and goes to this antenna here on the hotspot that then that's you know that audio coming from me talking goes to the antenna the hotspot gets it and then sends it out and connects it to the server that is running things that are called talk group 91 or Reflector One Charlie, and in the in the C4FM Yesu case, it will be called. There'll be internet rooms like CQ UK, America Link ETC. So it's a bit of a learning curve. Uh, so just still waiting for that to boot. We know when it's booted because the screen will come on. And what I'm going to be able to do is remove the the hat that is holding this antenna. The hat is actually a radio. Holding this antenna here, I'll show, I will dismantle it in front of you, and I'll, then I'll just slide it onto what we call the GPIO pins. Right, there you are, it's come on, and that took about maximum two minutes, okay? Two minutes max. And then we'll be able to open this up and slide it onto these pins and put the SD card in, and it should just work out of the box. We shouldn't have to actually change the con con configuration. The PyStar configuration uh, is what is, is basically what's running the show. So let's just um, take the antenna off. Now you can buy these style for about, they're about 100 pound now I think, or you can buy the super duper one that does have a color screen. And I might test that one as well um, for about nearer 200 pounds. So we'll, we'll probably test both anyway. So let's just unplug it. Luckily, the Pi, the new Pi, has USB-C, so we can just use our cable. But hey, these adapters don't cost hardly anything. I've also got here in the background, I don't know if you can see it, my 
This is my GPS booster, 10 quid with an antenna and I get a much stronger signal, but that's another little thing. So these just pull apart really. There are little lugs, metal lugs that you sort of bend out a little bit and then it'll just pull off, okay? And then this is what we call an MMDVM hat. You can connect bigger screens to these MMDVM hats. That's the Raspberry Pi Zero. And it's the older model. If you get the Pi Zero version two, they're a lot faster. So we'll have to take out the SD card and we do have some convenient tweezers for this because they can be fiddly. And look, it comes out this way round there. So that's, we still can use that. Now we're gonna put the SD card into the new Pi 5. Now be really careful with these, because I have broken these a few times, these things, by pushing too hard, or I might have the case on and I'm pulling and I just, and I've actually got a Raspberry Pi 4 here that I broke that item. Um, so uh, there is a way of using a Pi without an SD card, but, you know, better just not break them in the first place. So we've got that there. The next thing we'll do is get our hat on. So MMDVM hat. What this does is a small radio that's, like I said, transmitting from here to your radio. The range, you know, you know you'd be surprised. It's not bad. You easily get around your house and garden and across the road. And what it's doing, it's passing through DMR D-Star Fusion. This one actually does M17 because it's got the latest firmware. Okay, but anyway, so we'll put, plonk that on there, onto the GPIO pins, making sure that everything is, is lined up. The SD card is in, so let's, this one, I'll, let, I'll leave the camera running. I'm going to plug it in, let's see if it even works, so of course it's going to come on. And, and let's just wait. And if it's three, four times faster, in theory, we should see that screen come to life in about 30 seconds. Oh, it might not even work. I mean, the Raspberry Pi 5 might just say, no, I don't want to. Of course, you're better off, once these are made, putting them into some sort of case. And now that I've got a five, I'll start looking up different projects and see what projects we can get that will work on this. So we've got the SD card in there. Still taking a while. Got the screen on, that's the OLED screen. You can run these without an OLED screen, but these, they tend to come with OLED screens. Otherwise, you can just, um, just buy one for about four pound and solder it on. So we're not having any joy there. I'll pause the video and I'll wait a bit longer and see if it comes on. So it didn't come on. So I'm now looking on the Pi Star website to see if they've got a new version for the Pi 5. We look here in the download section. They do have beta downloads. I'll also try an ethernet cable in there. There you go, one Ethernet cable, but nothing flashing. So I got a feeling we need a completely new, you know, a new image on our SD card. Just trying my test DV Mega Genesis one. Okay. So that's my little GPS booster, my little USB adapter. So I got a feeling it's a no go, but you never know. So I'm not really seeing all the lights, the green lights flashing that I would normally see. And Genesis, they boot up in 30 seconds, even, you know, even with the Raspberry Pi 3B. So I feel that we're going to need to find out from Pi Star if they've made an image for the Raspberry Pi 5. Yeah, we're getting a, a, a nothing come up there. I'll try the Ethernet. We do initially get the green. You can see it there. Green here. 
then it tends to go to red. I put the Ethernet in. Now, is the Ethernet even flashing? Not really. It's not even flashing, and you'd expect to see it flashing there. And it's staying green for longer. But no, no connection. Okay, well, I'll keep you informed. Obviously, we're going to experiment and learn. And um, once we can get it working with PyStar, we will. Thanks for watching my YouTube channel, doing lots of videos on the D74, relearning that in anticipation for when the D75 comes out. Both fantastic devices. Bye for now. All the best.